Tampa Police Department is continuing to abuse their power and our tax dollars to target and harass local activists. This past Friday, there was a press conference held. I posted it. If you guys haven't watched it, please go take a look. And um, local activists held this press conference and gave their personal accounts of Tamp Tampa PD harassing and targeting them. Jay Passmore, the same woman who was hit by a white supremacist and suffered severe injuries while her perpetrator got off free, was brave enough to tell yet another story of the Tampa Police Department failing her. After being denied access to Jane Castor's monumental announcement of her changes to the CRB, Jay decided to go home. And I'll let her tell you guys what happens next. Nothing matches the pain I felt hearing my five-year-old child scream, paralyzed in fear, as a TPD officer wouldn't remove his hand from his gun and pulled us over. They unlawfully pulled us over. They had no probable cause. They gave no indication. As I continued to ask, can you take your hand off your gun at least? My kid is crying. Two detectives on my passenger side looked and said, I'm not gonna tell them how to stand. Those police officers addressed me by name. The lack of humanity in that situation is absolutely disgusting to me personally. And think about how scary it would be for a police officer to call you by your first name without taking any identification. It's like, what else are they keeping tabs on? Who else are they keeping tabs on? Johnisha Wilkerson was another brave person to step up to the mic and tell her story. Now, if you guys don't remember her, she was the same person who was held at gunpoint by a Tampa police officer during a traffic stop for no good reason at all. And luckily she was able to record this traumatic event but Tampa Police Department retaliated by posting her information online. And since then, as you can imagine, she has not been able to live in peace. At this moment, I am homeless. I'm living in a hotel and at times where I feel like I can't pay for any more hotels, I end up sleeping in my car. I've been threatened, I had to change my whole life around because of this incident. Um, I was assaulted just recently and hospitalized. Now, Janisha has a GoFundMe, which I will link in the description of this video. So if you guys have the means, please go donate to her so that she can start to move forward with her life. If you are not outraged by Tampa Police Department targeting activists, then I need you to wake up. This is unacceptable. And Tampa Police Department, you're always preaching, serve and protect, serve and protect. But why are you using excessive force on your own community? Why are you stepping aside to leave your community vulnerable to white terrorist groups? Better yet, why are you rehiring crooked cops that turn off their body cams and threaten physical violence against people of our community? Tonight, one of three Tampa police officers fired last year for major policy violations is back on the force. The investigation began September of 2018 after someone complained to now former officers threatened physical violence during a call. When TPD investigators looked into it, they found John Larata did not record that incident on his body camera. Chief Brian Dugan told Aid on Your Side Officer Maceo appealed his firing and an arbitrator found it was too harsh a punishment. So he got his job back with a 15-day suspension. So after this officer's 15-day suspension, he'll be back on the force in our communities, being paid with our tax dollars, and we're just expected to feel safe about that. We asked the chief, can Maceo be trusted? That's my biggest concern, is we cannot be certain that they're not going to do this again. What a slap in the face. I mean, even Dugan can't even trust this guy he's rehiring, which makes no sense to me. Why are you rehiring him? So, so far we've covered how TPD is using our resources, our tax dollars, to terrorize protesters and other people of the community, to rehire dirty cops, and, uh, oh yeah, protect an inanimate statue of a mass murderer. A statue that spits in the face of the indigenous people of this community. How noble of you, TPD, wow. And Sheridan Murphy um, of the Fire E organization has tried for over 29 years now to get this statue removed. Unfortunately, Tampa Police Department is standing firm in their decision 
to keep the statue up. Man, I wish they stood this firmly against uh, attempted vehicular manslaughter. I wish they cared about human beings as much as they care about inanimate statues. And just to salt the wound, they only decided to start protecting the statue when an indigenous man was hit by a car driven by a white supremacist who the Tampa Police Department chose to protect instead of the actual victim of the situation. Absolutely sickening. We as citizens shouldn't have to explain to you, Tampa Police Department, that hitting people with a car is illegal and there needs to be consequences for doing that. Apparently in 2017, there was a Republican sponsored bill that was supposed to shield drivers from any liability if they were to hit or kill a protester with their car. That bill did not pass. Therefore, it is still illegal to hit a protester with your car. I'm sick and tired of law enforcement acting dumb. I'm sick and tired of them expecting us to do our own investigations, expecting us to teach them the law. I'm honestly sick and tired of talking about this and seeing no real action on their end. But I'm going to continue to talk about this because I think it's important to get this information out there so that people don't become complacent and they know what's going on. So let's be honest, me talking about this stuff over and over again is not gonna solve any problems. It's up to us to take real action, use our voices and use our vote. And speaking of which, Andrew Warren is up for re-election. He's our state attorney. He's the same guy that chose not to prosecute the cops that were involved in the turning off the body cam and threatening physical violence ordeal. Chad Cronister, our Hillsborough County Sheriff, is also up for re-election. And might I remind you, this is the same guy who, you know, one of his deputies was going 20 mi 21 miles over the speed limit and ended up hitting and killing Josiah Penner. And Chad Cronister thought a good punishment for this, for murdering a child, would be five days suspension without pay. Not only that, he decided to make several statements that defended this deputy um, while the family still has not received true justice for the murder of their loved one, Josiah Pinner. So this is why local elections are so important. Um, it's important for us to vote in people that aren't gonna look out for their own interests and that genuinely want to make decisions on behalf of us, the community. All right, this video has been long enough. Thank you for sticking around this long if you're still here. I will try, try my best to keep you guys updated on the latest protests and events that are going on this week. Obviously, BCM is holding the July 31st Trump rally protest. I think Black Lives Matter Pasco County is doing something big this week. And obviously, St. Pete has been protesting every day. So go to as many as you can. Please show out. Numbers matter. Um, and stay educated out there.